After two scrubs on Sunday and Monday due to an issue with the ground systems and weather, this afternoon, Starship lifted off for a tenth time. While Starship V-2 has had a rocky history so far with an early end to each of its previous flights, this time around, both the booster and ship completed their flight profiles. This included a splashdown of the booster, followed by the upper stage completing payload deployment, a Raptor relight, and finally re-entry, ending with a flip and splashdown in the Indian Ocean. Here I'll go more in depth into exactly what happened, ship re-entry, landing, and more. Again, there were some weather concerns, with SpaceX pointing out in the lead-up to launch that conditions were only about 55% favorable for liftoff. Fortunately, they found a window and the vehicle was cleared to launch. As usual, the water deluge system was activated, followed shortly after by ignition of Super Heavy's 33 Raptor engines. The vehicle then lifted off and soon after cleared the tower. Views from the ground and the provided telemetry on the official livestream showed that all 33 Raptor engines were firing. It then passed through the moment of peak mechanical stress on the rocket, Max-Q. Soon after, you could see the engine graphic update and show one of the middle ring Raptor engines no longer firing. By T plus 2 minutes and 36 seconds, Miko occurred, which SpaceX calls most engines cut off because the booster's three center engines continue to fire. Right after, hot staging occurred, which for the second time featured a deterministic flip. Specifically, starting on Flight 9, SpaceX began blocking specific vents within the hot stage ring to ensure the upper stage's exhaust pushes the booster in the most efficient direction. Because of this, the booster requires less propellant for its journey back to the pad, or in this case, the water, which in return provides more payload capacity on the way up. At the same time that was happening, the upper stage ignited its six Raptor engines and began accelerating, the telemetry showing all engines firing. In the meantime, the booster ignited 12 engines a part of its boost back burn. That same engine that cut off earlier didn't relight. Not only did the engine graphic show this, but soon after it separated from the ship, you could see that one engine still wasn't firing. While not ideal, the booster has engine out capability, meaning it can still complete its boost back burn and even catch attempts with missing engines. On this flight, instead of trying to catch the booster, the plan was to complete a landing burn and splash down in the water. At T plus 3 minutes and 13 seconds, mission control called out, ship raptor chamber pressure nominal. Views from inside the engine bay showing the six engines also looked good. As the booster was returning, you could see its hot stage ring close by, which was jettisoned soon after hot staging. In the future, SpaceX plans to make a permanent version attached to the booster, but for the time being, they're used on each flight. Soon after, the booster made its final approach. At T plus 6 minutes and 17 seconds, it ignited 12 of its engines with the same middle ring Raptor not firing like before. It then shut off all engines, with the exception of the two center Raptors and a single engine from the middle ring. This slowed the vehicle to a hover before they shut off the center ring engine, followed right after by the center two. The booster was still quite high in the air, so after the engines were shut off, it fell into the water and exploded on impact. While violent looking, this was all part of the testing plan for the booster. Normally, it would fire 13 engines and then switch to the center three. However, SpaceX wanted to test and gather data on the ability for a backup engine from the middle ring to complete a landing burn in the event one of the center engines couldn't fire. As for the hard impact, the company has no intention of reusing this booster and knew the final splashdown would be harsh. Focusing back on the ship, at this point, it was over halfway done with its burn and continuing to accelerate. At T plus 6 minutes and 10 seconds, Mission Control again called out that ship Raptor chamber pressure was nominal. Finally, at T plus 8 minutes and 50 seconds, the three vacuum Raptor engines were shut off, with the center three sea level engines following suit seconds later. Views from inside the engine bay showed intact engines and no visible leaks. They then gave the call of ship nominal insertion. Given the history of V2 Starship upper stages, this was quite a big milestone. We then got a great view from an onboard camera on the flaps as they moved in and out of a stowed position. At T plus 13 minutes and 25 seconds, they cut to a view inside the payload bay. Unlike Flight 9, this time, there were no visible leaks or methane floating within the compartment. The next major milestone was payload deployment. At T plus 16 minutes and 56 seconds, the payload door was opened. We then watched as Starlink simulators were slowly lowered and ejected from the ship. The system, which is often referred to as the PEZ dispenser, has each satellite stacked and then lowers each one after the previous was deployed. Looking at some of the views inside the payload bay, the system could definitely be improved, but given this was the first in-space test, it's a good sign for future use. On the second deployment, you could see the test satellite slightly bump the top of the payload door right as it was exiting the ship. Despite this, the rest of the stack was deployed without any big issues. With this complete, SpaceX could move on to the final in-space demo, a Raptor Relight. At T plus 37 minutes and 51 seconds, two of the three sea level Raptor engines gimbled away and then a single Raptor ignited for just a few seconds before being shut off. The engines then gimbled back into position, marking a successful test. As far as its relevance, in the future, Starship will need to complete deorbit burns in space by relighting some of its Raptor engines. Over the next 10 minutes or so, the ship continued on its trajectory before plasma began to build up on the vehicle at the start of reentry. 
this was followed by damage to the engine skirt. At T plus 46 minutes and 49 seconds, they cut to the camera inside of the engine bay, where everything looks nominal. That was until a large flash and explosion from the bottom right of the skirt. This sent debris everywhere inside the engine bay and out into space before they cut to a different camera. About a minute later, they cut back and you could see that all the debris had cleared and what was left was a mangled engine skirt. Fortunately, the engines looked to still be intact despite the energetic event right next to them. As far as what could have caused this, one of the official commentators went on to say, I will note, when we started doing these missing tile tests, we were intentionally removing them only in the skirt. As that's not over your fuel tanks or anything else, or structurally critical for keeping the entire vehicle together, he said. It's possible plasma buildup in that area could have caused extra heating and led to the explosion. Even still, the ship continued on to its journey to the Indian Ocean. As the ship got closer to the surface, the views improved, and the vehicle was being controlled by its flaps. When the camera cut to one of the aft flaps, some burn through near the bottom was visible. This is an issue SpaceX had been working and trying to gather data on. They did note that they were intentionally stressing the flaps to see exactly what they were capable of. This obviously was the case as the heat ate up more of the flaps even past peak heating. A part of this testing, at T plus one hour, they fully deployed the flaps, trying to stress them as much as possible. Even with some of the burn through, the aft flaps continued to move and stay in one piece. On a view from the forward flaps, you could also see some charring on the side of the rocket. A few minutes later, the ship made its way into a belly flop position in preparation for a final landing burn. This places the ship in a horizontal orientation, using its size to help slow it down. In addition, we got more views of the aft flaps which had taken a beating. Despite this, they continued to actuate and work to control the ship during its final approach. As it made its way through the clouds, it had slowed down to just over 300 kilometers an hour. Then, at T plus 1 hour, 6 minutes and 15 seconds, Mission Control called out landing burn startup, and the ship ignited its three center Raptor engines. This swung the bottom of the ship to the other side before orienting itself vertically and slowly lowering into the water. SpaceX cut to a buoy camera last second, which showed splashdown and then an explosion right after. Taking a still image from the buoy right before splashdown, you can get an idea of the state of the ship after this stress test. What it left off was a clean black slate of heat shield tiles and experiments, and it is massive charring and likely remnants of unprotected areas breaking down. For reference, there were quite a few heat shield related tests on this flight, including multiple metallic tile options and other alternative materials. Some of these probably broke down over the course of entry, leaving behind the orange. It's also worth noting that the ship's proximity to the buoy camera suggests it was a very accurate landing. These cameras are able to move, but only so much. If so, it means that the damaged flaps and heat shield tests weren't enough to stop the ship from controlling its entry and making an accurate landing. Either way, this marked a very successful flight for SpaceX. While there are definitely things that still need improving, unlike previous Starship V2 flights, SpaceX was able to complete every mission milestone both with the ship and booster. In the coming days, we should receive more information and video showcasing the flight. After a somewhat rough history of flights with Starship V2, Flight 10 managed to land both the ship and booster in a controlled manner. In addition, we saw engine out tests, payload deployment, a Raptor relight, and a reentry stress test. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.